my name is Jim Merriweather, and I'm a professor of history at uh, California State University, Channel Islands. In 2007, 2008, uh, I and my family, we went to Kenya, where I was teaching at the University of Nairobi uh, and doing research there as well. I'm a historian, and so I was doing a couple of different projects. One was looking at the airlift of Kenyan students in 1960, uh, which became part of the 1960 presidential campaign between uh, Nixon and Kennedy. Uh, and actually, I would argue an uh, influential part of that campaign. And then the other larger project that I'm working on is dealing with the U.S. Uh, relationship with Africa during decolonization. Uh, being in Kenya was enormously valuable for both of those projects. And then I ended up working on a third project, which was actually a, a collection of essays that were a tribute to one of Kenya's premier historians, uh, Godfrey Muriuki. Actually, this is my second Fulbright that I've been on. In uh, 2000, 2001, I went to Zimbabwe, uh, which was an interesting time to be there as well. And so I, I have a familiarity from that with the Fulbright program, but you know, it was actually my daughter this time who had been with us in Zimbabwe, and she said, it's time to go back. And fortunately, my, you know, the research I was doing, it was, it was a good timing for that. And so the kind of the confluence of those, those events led me to, to apply again for this. Living in Kenya was, was uh, truly a, a remarkable opportunity. It also happened to be the year that they had their elections, uh, which ended up uh, being disputed, uh, and there were some troubles afterwards. And so for a historian, I was living through history, uh, which was which was, was quite, quite interesting. Uh, but at the same time, what was most memorable about the, about the time there were the, the people that you're, that you're working with, that you're, that you're teaching with, and that you're interacting with. And, and those things are just remarkable uh, opportunities, uh, both for myself, my family, uh, and then to bring that back with me uh, in my teaching and such. Having my family there uh, added tremendously to the experience. Uh, my uh, wife uh, had never been to Africa before, the, before our first Fulbright and now just wants to kind of move there collectively. Uh, and our, younger, our youngest daughter has been with us on both of the Fulbrights and I think it's profoundly influenced her. And it opens up uh, more windows of meeting people uh, our daughter went to the international school, and it it opens up this 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 world of of people from around the around the world who have come in and, and are at the international school, uh, as well as the people that you're meeting uh, at the university and in your everyday life. Um, so it just adds uh, exponentially to to your to your opportunities. I think having the Fulbright. Uh, has has changed uh, everybody in my family in, in very positive uh, and meaningful ways. I don't think there's a day or few days that go by where something doesn't remind me. Uh, maybe it's an email from a, from a colleague that I was teaching with. Uh, maybe it's a, a project that we're working on that that has me rethinking it. Uh, maybe it's something that my that my daughter says, uh, or an experience that she has. Uh, when she came back, uh, she ended up starting a nonprofit uh, for for some medical work uh, in Kenya. And so, in various ways, it infuses one's life. I think, uh, and it can be in the classroom where I'm teaching, uh, and my students feel a stronger connection to to what we're talking about. Uh, it can be in one's own home, uh, and and that becomes part of, of one's existence, both in the immediate uh, days, weeks, months following your your grant, but also for the years that follow as well. So. Yeah, the research that I was doing uh, ended up being three projects, and uh, two of them were articles that uh, were were published one in as a as a book chapter actually and the other was an article in one of the historical journals and then the third one is this ongoing project is this book uh, dealing with uh, the US relationship with Africa 
and being in Kenya afforded me access to materials that I would not necessarily have had. But I think even more, it connected me with a scholarly community which helps inform each of those projects uh, in ways both, both you know, tangibly scholarly as well as in perspectives on, on how to go about writing that. My general advice to, to my colleagues is apply for a Fulbright. And for some reason, you know, some people will just never do it. And my advice is you've got to do it. And start early, you know, you know make contact with where you're going. But the simple advice is you've got to apply and, and you should do it.